Fingers crossed they're all... Ah! Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it was supposed to be my border print 102, 20, lesson 201. I'm not sure how those increment schedules work. I just like the sound of border prints 101 so I need to find out what the next level up is. But as you can see, it's still in fabric form. I have got two bodices over there but I need to make a pair of trousers and I need to make a skirt both of which are very simple and probably could get done today but it is half past six and I still need to edit it and get it uploaded so I was wondering what I was going to do for Friday's video because I would like to have a Friday video I thought about one of the ideas that you guys gave me when I was talking about the what I should be making something that somebody mentioned was that they would be really interested to see a modern take on a vintage pattern so I've gone through my vintage collection and I've got a few out that I thought I would share with you and add into my little basket that I keep next to me that I have my want to try soon patterns in. There's actually not too many back there at the moment but I haven't got any vintage ones in there and I don't think I have no that's a that's a fib I have tried one vintage pattern and I ended up tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it to the point where I gave up and put put a completely different bodice on the circle skirt that I wanted to try so I haven't worked from a vintage pattern before and I think it's going to be an interesting experiment so let me show you the ones that I've pulled out of my stash so we'll talk you through what I'm thinking and see what you guys think if you have any suggestions or recommendations I think it's going to be quite interesting to work out if these are printed patterns or if it's just the markings the you know the notches and the holes that guide you to how to put the things together I do watch a lot of Angela Clayton videos so I have seen patterns right from the 1900s through to sort of 70s it's going to be interesting to see what these ones are like. The very first one is the Simplicity 5499. Now I was inspired to buy this by the shopping bag that the very lovely Candy sent me and it had this illustration on it and it was the wrong number but I managed to find and track down this pattern. It is for a size 36 inch bust so I'm gonna have to do a two inch full bust adjustment but I have done that on a princess seamed before and it is sort of princess seemed so I think I think I'm going to be able to do it I am obviously going to want mine to be a lot longer I am not a fan of my legs and I would like to at least cover up my knees and I prefer my skirts to come mid-calf I think that's going to be well I mean it's you know just altering that's going to be a fairly easy alteration to do this is an empire line but after making the French poetry loon dress the other day with that kind of sort of empire line and the back looks like the same as the loon dress where the uh, waistline is actually on the waistline as well which I think is going to work really well for me the only thing that I'm not a fan of batteries dying two sex that's better so yes the only thing that I am not a fan of are the sleeves I really like the sleeve cap it has a lot of volume in the sleeve cap but the long sleeve is straight down to the wrist and that's just not my preference so I probably will want to slash and spread that one or steal the sleeve cap from this one and the bottom of the sleeve from the 7537 because I love that sleeve I do kind of like the little puffy ones I think Although I am thinking I am probably going to want to have those be flutter sleeves. It might be as simple as just not putting the cuff on. The sleeve pattern for those ones looks fairly wide but not as wide as I usually like my flutter sleeves. And you guys have asked for a tutorial on how to drop to slash and spread a sleeve from like a regular sleeve through to a flutter sleeve so this could be a good one for that. I also want to take advantage of the seam lines and I want to do colour blocking with this one. I think it could be really really fun. If I have enough left from the fabric I'm going to do the release from. I could do it the other way around and do these kind of top bits in a print and then the rest of this in a black because I do have some black rayon and that could work really well so I'm really excited to try this one. It is a printed pattern by the looks of things so that's that's hopeful. Let's not lose any of those pieces and I have read the instructions for these and they do kind of make sense. I think I am going to end up French seaming a lot of stuff or 
either that or fully lining it but I, I think this is, could be a really really lovely dress and I think it's going to be something that I would enjoy wearing. Next up is the 6605 Simplicity pattern and this one I had put out a plea on the peeps group for anybody who knew what number this one was. The very lovely Anna said well this one's very similar let me send you my copy which was very kind of her and, and before I got to say no no don't worry she'd already put it in the post. So her copy arrived and I've sent it back to her but it did mean that I knew to look out for this one on Etsy. I think this one came from Etsy as well. This one is for a 38 inch bust so the only alterations I will need to do for this one is kind of scoop it in at the waist and it has a centre front seam and side seams and a centre back seam as well. I really like the sleeves on this one. They are much more my style poofy and into a cuff so that's exciting. Although it looks like... I will have to draft a continuous lap because I think they're using the underarm seam as a place to put the cuff in. I like the little round collar and again this is an empire line dress and so again very similar to the French poetry loon dress which I do really really like so I am more enthused to give this one a try. I think again I would probably kind of take a leaf out of their book and do something along the lines of either a solid or a pattern and then solid for the cuffs and the collar. I think that looks really really nice. So yeah, I would like to try that one as well. Next up, we have a Halston pattern, which is a company that I very much enjoy the aesthetic of, very 70s. This one was sent to me by the, by the very lovely Maggie. It's for a size 12 and it is the McCall's 5829 Carefree Patterns from McCall's. It was two dollars and 25 cents if measurements do not correspond order by hip measurement and adjust pattern at the waist that's good to know so this is for a cape and then a skirt and the skirt is really really interesting i will hopefully have taken some photographs of this for you it says lightweight wool wool like blends wool crepe wool double knits and wool flannel now i have some summer weight wool that i absolutely love it's incredibly expensive. It was £35 a metre. I have three metres of it and I would like to make a skirt and a top out of it to get something that looks like a dress but is a little bit more versatile. I don't know whether it would be worth doing in this fabric because the interesting thing about this fabric is the seaming detail and I think it might get lost in that print and the print might be directional so it might not work for this one. But I do think this is a really really interesting skirt and I would like to give it a try. I have some really nice wool suiting here that could work really well for it and if I top stitch the seam details it could make a feature out of it which could be quite an interesting one so yeah I'm really intrigued by this one I think it's a really really interesting pattern I do like the cape that goes over the top as well but obviously it's far too hot for that but the skirt the skirt I really want to try next up is a slip pattern this is for a 38 inch bust so shouldn't need too much adjustment a very lovely Alex sent this to me as part of a KB pattern swap quite a long time ago and I would really like to give this a try it's a 38 inch bust and a 31 inch waist so I will need to take in the waist a little bit but it's going to be really really interesting to make this. It's cut on the bias as, as you can tell from the back there it is cut on the bias. I don't know what kinds of fabrics. It's a Weldon's pattern 7723. This should fit me as is. Like I say with just a little bit of tweaking at the waist and I would really like to make myself some new slips. I have three shop walk ones that I wear on rotation and wash frequently. I would like to make myself some. I get asked that question a lot, do you make your own slips? The answer is no, no I don't, but I do have this pattern and I really would like to give this a try. So this is on my list and it's going in my basket of ones to try soon. Next up, it's another simplicity, this time 5609. This is very Zimmerman-esque. The very lovely Rachel from Stitched Up sent this to me early on this year and it's because she's just like, I saw this and I thought of you. I really, really like it. I think it's going to be a really interesting one to make. I'm not sure if I'm going to want the ruffle around the collar, but I'm not ruling it out. I think it's very 80s 
don't ever know where the dates are printed on these things. Very, very 80s, but I think given the right kind of fabrics and styling, it could work really well for my current wardrobe and the sort of things that I like to wear. So I would like to give this one a try. I'm not sure it would fall into the basics category, but I'm definitely thinking this as a white shirt would be awesome. Very tempted to try this one very, very soon. It recommends... Silk and Silk Types, Crepe and Crepe Type, Tissue File, Taffeta, Lightweight Linen, Broadcloth, also Madras, extra fabric needed for plaids, stripes and one way designs. So I've definitely got something in my stash that will work for this. I bought some stripes and ginghams to go with the Savannah print and they are both in shirting fabrics. So one of those could be really good for this. It would have a lot of structure, but I think I kind of might like that. So yeah very excited to try this one and then the final one was another present from the lovely maggie and it's mccall's 6418 and it's a shirt or a top pattern with yokes and this to me very much screams 70s pirate 100 percent view c is kind of a bit epic i think i would probably i don't know if i like the yokes or not i, th I think i do but i think i like them in theory rather than in practice i think view a is the one that i would want to go for and view a also would be it's got elastication at the waist it would be really easy to elongate the bottom parts of this one to make it into a dress it's very much like the grasser pattern that i am I'm hopefully going to be trying at some point this month as well. So I do think that this would work really well in my wardrobe. I also think that in the current heat waves that we're having, a dress like this would be lovely. So yeah, very tempted to make this one quite soon as well. I know they are all patterns that technically you guys have seen before, but I thought I would show you the vintage patterns in my stash that are inspiring me the most. And that comment on the video made me think about my vintage patterns and which ones I would like to make first. Hopefully I've picked some interesting ones. I think I've picked some fairly easy ones to ease me in. I have some vintage patterns that I know are unprinted on the tissue paper and that I uh, have a lot of moving parts going on and I also think that I might attempt those once I've drafted my block and then drafted the pattern pieces to fit me from that rather than trying to alter the pattern because I know they're all tiny. A lot of the vintage patterns I collected early on are all very very tiny and I bought them because I loved the style of them, not even kind of thinking about the measurements that they were drafted for. So I have picked ones that are easy but I think in doing so it means that actually this might actually happen and rather than just sort of planning it or buying things and sticking them in stash and thinking one day starting with slightly easier ones might mean that I actually Prog make these and then progress on to more interesting or detailed or difficult patterns in the future. So let me know in the comments down below which one you like out of these. Are there any in here that you would make? Have you made any of these? Let me know in the comments down below. Would be interested to hear what you think. So I hope you've enjoyed this quickie little video. If you have please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!